Okay, so I started running because I sustained a lifelong injury from uh, playing volleyball. Volleyball was my first uh, sport. Uh, I have played that for such a long time and sustaining that injury really completely knocked my confidence off. I was um, quite alone. I wouldn't say lonely, but it's more that I was uh, segregated from people. I, I didn't know how to mingle with people afterwards because I don't know who to get in touch with. What will I do with my life after volleyball? While I have a full-time job, but it's not uh, sufficient enough to kind of keep me going, especially when things are getting a little bit stressful. Uh, in work, I have been very um, career oriented. I'm always driven and passionate with the, with the work that I do as a nurse. But um, running has given me that lease of life um, to do things outside work to help me get fit, stay active, get a bit of fresh air with this uh, kind of weather that we have right now um, and it's really really good for my mental health uh, which I'm sure most people can um, totally relate um, running is not just there, there's just more to running than just exercise it's running is, is, is a life per se uh, what I mean by that is running is while it's giving you the exercise and the fitness, it's also giving you a new lease of life for, for, for someone like me who has been kind of cocooned in, in, in a certain way that I, I couldn't find any other avenue. So through running, I was able to meet people, uh, have that sense of belongingness, be part of a community eventually once I um, joined a running club. But running per se is life in itself. Um, and that's it. Okay, so I joined a running club because while I really enjoyed running on my own for about three years, I achieved so many things on my own, uh, but there was something missing. And going back to 2015, when the marriage equality uh, referendum was uh, taking place, I kind of felt that at that time, I have to have some sort of a voice and I need to find an avenue where I could um, voice out my opinion, be part of a community and be more engaged in, in the country that adopted me. So I searched on the internet, I found Dublin Frontrunners Athletic Club and I joined them. Um, I joined the club, they embraced me, they accepted me, welcomed me, accommodated me, and since then really um, it has given me uh, again life, I will say. They saved me from, you know, I suppose depression, I will call it, um, kind of almost solitary confinement at times. Um, the running club has so many positive uh, aspects that brings to it. it. It's not only just meeting people, making friends. In fact, actually, to the point that because I'm on my own here in Ireland, they, they are kind of some sort of, they're like my family. My brothers, my sisters, they are the ones that I confide to. They, I have learned to be more comfortable with them. Um, so enjoying uh, running while 
in the company of others is, is, is really good. Um, especially after doing some races, uh, if you're doing it on your own, just like what I've done for about three years before joining the, the, the front runners, it's just when you're finished with the races, you just go home. You don't have anyone to talk to, no one to tell you you did well or you did bad or how was it, how, you know, there was no one to talk to. So with the running club, um, it's just that sense of community, it's, an, it, it's a sense of belongingness, friendship, camaraderie, um, it's, it, it's real life is, is all I can say with, with uh, being in a running club. Okay, so I would say that my favorite distance to run is a half marathon because that distance gives me the satisfaction, the feeling that I have been out, that I have really embraced exercise for that particular day. Um, going back again to 2016, because I love that distance so much and when my mental health took some beating from the stress of the work I ended up doing eight back-to-back -back half marathons as in every week I would be doing a half marathon between Wicklow, Wexford, Waterford, Connemara, The Hague, Berlin, Madrid. I, 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 I just did everything possible to stay fit and and look after myself from my mental health point of view. And as I've said, when I do a half marathon, it really gives me that satisfaction, that feeling that I have been out, that it wasn't, um, it wasn't just an ordinary race. It, 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 again, it, to me, it's more I, a life that I have had for that particular day. Um, so I would really say it, it's a half marathon distance. Um, I think that's, that's, that's me, Sean. <laughs> yeah, well, I wouldn't really say it would be my favorite race or I wouldn't say, but the one that really sticks into my head is when I run the Dublin Marathon, thinking of a um, special someone, uh, the twin brother of my best friend who had cancer. So right at the very start, I was very mindful that I am doing that particular half marathon for him. And before actually running that, uh, that distance, I'd say about a week before I had a chat with him and he kind of gave me a little challenge to say could you beat my time and so I must say I really did push my limit to beat his time but at the same time if I I said to myself if I beat his time that's actually my gift to him um, People wouldn't probably even believe me that throughout the time that I was running, all I could say is the pain and the suffering, the breathlessness that I was experiencing at that time is incomparable to what he was going through. So he was my inspiration at the time I was doing the distance. Um, I'm sure he, if, if he would see this video, he would totally um, remember my conversation with him and thereafter obviously my conversation with uh, his twin sister who happened to be my colleague and my best friend in work and uh, then he set up actually another challenge for me to beat his uh, marathon time which I didn't um, because he wasn't in my head at that, part, at that moment already um, so I must say really that half marathon distance the Dublin half marathon with, uh, with him in me at that particular moment. My goal really is uh, first and foremost to stay fit, to stay healthy, um, 
to look after myself, to look after my my mental health, my mental well-being. Um, as much as I have loved doing all the races, uh, the challenges, um, in particular the Lanzarote International Challenge, which we couldn't do obviously last year given the pandemic. Um, so for now, my uh, current goal is to just keep fit, keep healthy, and you know, I suppose ride this storm that we currently are having. Uh, as a nurse myself, it's been very tough, obviously, in work as a nurse. And um, the things that you see in work is affecting you both physically and mentally, emotionally. Um, there are days that you just don't want to go out, you just don't want to talk to people. So, yeah, so my, my current goal is to just uh, look after myself for the moment. And when hopefully this thing is over, I would love to do a triathlon. A triathlon. Uh, I'm a very bad swimmer, but I'm willing to, to learn how to swim. Um, I can cycle, no problem. Uh, so eventually, hopefully a triathlon is my, my even just one, one full triathlon. Uh, that will be my ultimate goal in the future. And obviously, uh, the other thing that I have really set for myself is to do 11 consecutive Dublin City Marathon. I'm, I just finished number nine, so I have two more marathons, Dublin City Marathons to go. So uh, that's my future goal. Yeah. So Eric, I was just uh, interested in maybe a little bit more information on the front runners. Um, Dublin front runners can see you have the, your sport in the jacket there yeah. with the, the deer. So the front runners, Dublin front runners, are based in the Phoenix Park. That's right. Yeah, it's 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 based in Phoenix Park. It's um, about 11, 12 years old now, I believe. Uh, I only joined the club way back 2015, as I had mentioned in uh, the clip earlier. Uh, because I would like to take part and you know be part of the community during the uh, marriage equality referendum um, so uh, I only really joined the club a month before the referendum itself and I must say that uh, as, you know that it has been really a very good community um, it's the biggest uh, uh, lesbian LGBT um, sports club um, that I know of and um, even though it's LGBT, it also caters for other um, people. Fully, uh, yeah. fully inclusive. Yeah. yeah, it's fully inclusive. It doesn't, it doesn't um, state that you can't join if you're not a member of the sure. of, of the of the LGBT community. It embraces everyone. It, it, it it's um, it's very accommodating. Um, so front runners itself has. Um, they are really, I suppose, really good people mm -hmm. in there. There's a lot of talent. Um, there's a lot of, of people that can uh, just not give you something about the running. There's more to it in a way that they always bring their professions. So you, you can discuss anything and everything bar from running. Yeah. And then if you really would like to discuss running at the same time, <laughs> yeah. you can have it either. Um, it's a good support, it's a good network. Um, I've learned so much from the club, um, both, as I've said, both from running, from no, you know, even because, um, as I've said, they have given me plenty of support um, from things that I wouldn't know myself as an Irish person. Sure. I, I wouldn't have, obviously, an Irish family in here who could guide me all the time between the even the most little things in life sure, yeah. so front runners is the one that's giving me that little bit of an advantage um, in terms of uh, being a member of that club um, and one thing that really I have thoroughly loved with the club is um, during the time that I was doing races. I remember in particular there was one in Akil, uh, there's one in Lanzarote, actually twice in Lanzarote, uh, that I used my uh, profession, my, my, my knowledge with healthcare 
that I managed, that I just had to stop running and, and stop racing because my priority was to save and help people who are in trouble sure. from the running. Yeah. And I didn't realize that my my friends in the running club, my friends in front runners have noted that and uh, and bear that in mind. So come come a few years later they uh, bestowed the uh, runner of the year award to me for being a good uh, representative of the club sure um, as what they have said you know front runners and the, uh, and the award is not just about the running itself it's also about making the club uh, respectable sure uh, you know putting the, the club out there representing it, the club yeah, well yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so um, I, I, I even up to this time I, I am still uh, I, I must say gobsmacked by, by, by that <laughs> but uh, all the while I thought I am just helping that people or those people at, at the time sure. and I, I, I just had to set priority obviously uh, uh, at that very moment but um, you know to be acknowledged by your friends that you know that, that they think that you're doing something good for the club is 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 it's just great. It's special. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. And a question I'd like to ask you myself in regards to the current situation. You're on the front line. You see it day in, day out. Um, and just having conversations with you about it uh, and other healthcare professionals. A lot of people are um, maybe flagging a little bit at the moment. Like, would you have a message for the people out there on? what you see day in day out and what, what other people what people don't see they only see the numbers every day on tv but don't actually see the human side of it okay well but i would really like to say uh, okay well but i would really like to say uh, as a healthcare professional that is a, a runner at the same time is to um abide by the public health guidelines you know uh do your this social distancing you know do what is recommended because it's for your it's for you um, I don't have to elaborate what I do see and experience in the hospital but all I can say is it only takes one person uh, to, to knock you completely off um, and to have that such impact um, in your life uh, and when you have that impact in your life it affects everything including your running um, again COVID-19 per se knocked on the door of our house because I lost my my brother-in-law last year to COVID um, it was very difficult because of he was in another country I, I was here I can't do much um it's it, it's very difficult when when you feel so helpless so my message to everyone is do do your part do everything that you can to protect you to protect yourself to protect your family your friends because in the long run it will save you and everyone around you. Keep people safe if, around you. Yeah. Because you don't want that COVID-19 knocking on your door. Because when it does, I hope that it's just a complete knock and you not opening the door and welcoming the COVID-19 into your into your house or into your life. Because it, it's 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 devastating. Right. So, thanks very much for that, Eric. That's, that's um, some uh, interesting words from Eric. Um, I'd like to say thanks to Eric today for, for coming and meeting me here and doing this interview. Um, it's an absolutely stunning day here in the Phoenix Park. Uh, it's the kind of day you'd love to be running in the Phoenix Park. Loads of people out running. Uh, I hope you're taking care of yourselves, doing the right things, staying safe. Thanks very much for tuning in, guys, and uh, we'll see you soon. Bye now. Bye. Bye, Sean. Thanks, thanks for having me. No problem, Eric. And, um... As I have always say, Phoenix Park is the place to go, place to go. when when the weather is when really the weather's good. fine. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Thank you. Super. Bye.